you can easily make over $20,000 this month with this free list for cold calling that most wholesalers watching this, frankly, don't know how to do correctly. This is the Zillow for sale by owner list. I truly believe the Zillow for sale by owner list is one of the most underutilized lists in the entire country for wholesaling real estate. And frankly, most wholesalers don't follow the rules I have. If you go out here and cold call the for sale by owner list, you will be a chump. You won't get any deals and it won't do well. But if you specifically follow the mold and rules I have for Zillow for sale by owners, you can easily make over $20,000 a month. I help so many people get their first deal from the Zillow for sale by owner list, and you can do the same exact thing. Go check out the HUDs on any of my vlogs and see I've made uh, the most I've ever made on a Zillow for sale by owner is $55,000. HUDs were posted in the vlog. Just search any of the vlogs I got and flip with Rick. But what I could tell you is Zillow for sale by owners, <clears throat> they're super underutilized. And I truly believe you watching this video, you think you know how to do the Zillow for sale by owner list. You think you know it, but you, you don't. Okay. Unless you actually been following me for years, you probably don't know the exact correct way to actually make 20 K getting your first deal or get your first cold calling deal with Zillow for sale by owners. And if you're frankly a complete beginner, this is a great strategy before you dip your toes in the full thing of cold calling to actually start cold calling and actually make a ton of money doing it. I truly believe everybody watching this can make over $20,000 by doing this list. But here's the honest truth. You have to go and do exactly what I say. So today I'm going to show you how to pull the Zillow for sale by your list. And most importantly, how to cold call it. I'm going to give you the scripts, tips, and tricks, and everything you need to know about it. So you can actually go out here and become a successful wholesaler when it comes to cold calling the Zillow for sale by owner list. The honest truth is most of you guys don't know how to do it. I, I, I hate to say it. And you guys think you know, but the rules are actually different. And I think I'm going to say a lot of things that are going to change your mindset on it. Uh, we're going to do it. The, the reason I'm also making this is I'm actually going to do some live cold calling uh, later this week. So in about two or three days. And I want people to kind of see the rules and then you can see me actually do it and, and you see how I do it. So uh, before I get into it, I, I do want you guys to know, like when I go and cold call the Zilla for sale by owner list, I do it and I, I get results. I get sellers to agree on price. I lowball like crazy and people love the live streams I do on it. But the truth is the reason why when I do those, maybe every live stream or every other live stream, I usually can go land a deal. And really was that two or three hours of work just to get a five, seven, eight, nine thousand dollar deal. The reason why I can do that and you can't is because you're not following the rules. You're not saying the scripts the way I do. And obviously you don't have the thousands and thousands of hours I put into cold calling. But honestly, if you know how to use the scripts correctly, you'll do well. Ask anybody in the chat that have watched most of my live streams when it comes to cold calls. I say the same thing every time, but I get results because I just keep doing it. So what I'm going to tell you is I'm going to give you my cheat sheet. I'm going to give you everything I do to actually become successful. And then from there, I'm going to give you basically all the gold I have on Zillow for sale by owners. Because frankly, maybe... 10% of the people watching this are actually going to do what I say, but those 10% have a good chance of making 20K this month. So let's get into it and let's talk about this. So first and foremost, for every beginner out here, the Zillow for sale by owner list is one of the best ways to get your first wholesaling deal. I've said it before and I'll say it a million times. Zillow for sale by owners are great because the leads are there. There's no skip tracing. And as a beginner, just grab your phone and start smiling and dialing. There's no complicated list pulling. There's no skip tracing. Frankly, there's no money at all needed. You just got the phone numbers and you get dialing. That is it. There's no crazy comping. All the rules I have are there. Like it's super stupid, simple to actually go out here and get your first deal. Now, remember, like I think a lot of wholesalers, and the reason why I push them to Zillow for sale by owners is a lot of you guys have like this anxiety when it comes to calling sellers. You have this, this stress uh, th this crazy anxiety when it comes to actually talking to the sellers. And the cool part about the Zillow for sale by owner, so FYI, if I, I'm, I'm talking over your head here, uh, a Zillow for sale by owner is basically a list of people on Zillow who are listing their house for sale. They don't want a realtor. They don't do any of that stuff. And what we basically do is we offer to buy their property for cash for a certain price, let's say $100,000. And then we find a landlord, a rich landlord or house slipper, who wants to go and buy that house and then flip it for themselves. And they will give us a finder's fee, basically an assignment fee on top of our contract price 
So for example, maybe I lock it up for hundred grand and I find someone who wants to buy it for like 120. I'll go right there and make $20,000 in profit in literally a check. It's amazing. Go to freelancing.com to see all the checks. Like I, I, I get results from people and I do the results for myself. And so you can make $20,000 in one month by just doing this. Like no money, no experience. You can be in college, you can be in high school. Like I made over hundred K in high school doing this. It's insane. And I make millions of dollars now doing the strategy. I, I love it. Right. And so, so many people are a beginner, they have anxiety and these sellers are like, they're kind of warm. Like they're actually pretty receptive to you, like talking to, to them. And so it's a great stepping stone to get into cold calling. And if you know how to do it correctly, you can make a ton of money. So I, I kind of call it like the JV or college level of cold calling before you kind of get in the rough and tough NFL or like the NBA, the pros, right? This is the D league or the G league now, right? This is kind of the developmental spot spot before we get into the actual tough cold calling, right? And you can actually get really good results by doing it. And the reason why I love live streaming it and doing it is because first of all, I make really low offers. People get kind of mad. It's, it's kind of entertaining, I guess, but it's really educational seeing me building rapport, talking to sellers, having great conversations, right? It leads to great results and people like it. And so most wholesalers, and I, I'm not offending anyone by saying this, but like I say this as a, as a truth. I only knew how to cold call Zillow for sub owners because I did deals doing it. And <laughs> that's frankly how I learned. So like, wh what's the script I'm giving you? Is it like Rick's script? Rick never cold called a Zillow for sub owners. I had to learn how to do this myself and I added it onto the business. And so I, I did a lot of bad calls. I did a lot of bad scripts and I learned, okay, this script works, this script works. And what I figured out was the simpler I made my script, the simpler I made talking to these motivated sellers, the easier I was in my conversations, the more money I made. And so what we have to understand is most wholesalers, they don't do right on this because they don't know how to call the right way. Why, why do most people suck at cold calling? Because they have the wrong script. They don't know how to cold call the right way. And so if you know how to cold call the right way, you know actually how to use the right scripts I'm going to teach you right now, you're going to do really well. And so why do Zillow for sale by owners work, right? The, the reason why people that actually can stick to doing the Zillow for sub owners, the reason why it works is it just gets them in the seat, you know, the, the, the pilot chair, to just start making offers. Like in wholesaling real estate, the most important key metric or KPI of sorts is how many offers can I make? How many offers of price can I make? Because the more offers I get, the more contracts I get, the more contracts I get, the more I can sell and, you know, the more money I can make. And it's a vicious cycle of making a bunch of cash, right? That's what we love, right? So why do Zillow for sub owners work? Zillow for sub owners work because it lets you get into the action and lets you start going out here and doing it, right? And so let's get into it. Let's talk about it. So the first controversial statement I have to say, and I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for saying this. Uh, people aren't going to like me saying this. Don't get offended. But here's the truth. Zillow for sub owners, this is everything opposite what you think. Zillow for sub owners actually don't work for wholesaling. Let me say that one more time. You're like, whoa, wait, is this a clickbait video? Wait, is that coming out of text blast? Like, what's going on, right? And I know I'm probably throwing you guys off, but I 100% can put my reputation, my word, and my name on the line here and tell you, co-calling Zillow for sale by owners is not a way to get rich in wholesaling. It's not a way to actually, you'll not get a deal by just co-calling Zillow for sale by owners. You'll get tired of it. You'll get sick. You'll get out of this business. You're doing it all wrong. What you need to do instead is only go, not only go after Fizbo's, go after tired Zillow for sub owners. It, it's a slight word in my language, but it's the most important language difference I can give to you. Let me say it one more time. You are not going to call the Zillow for sub owner list. That's a very big list, right? There's a lot of Fizbo's out here and they are, frankly, they all want to sell for the tippy top price. They, 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 they want the most for the property. Now, what you want to do instead is co call the tired Zillow for sale by owner list. Let me say it one more time. You want to call the tired one, not the regular one. What, what's, what, what's a tired for sale by owner? A tired for sale by owner is someone that's listed the house and it's been listed for hundreds of days and it's getting no traction at all. Like there's no, no one's calling, no one's giving offers anymore. You, Realtors used to call, but no one calls anymore. It's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And they are frankly sick and tired of not being able to sell this house. And now they're willing to sell it for a discount. When they sell for a discount, you can get it under contract and sell it to a cash buyer for money. You make money. That, 
why am I on here? Am I, am I on here to sit on my butt all day and tell you, oh, you know, you're, like, just, just, you're going to listen to me because I'm so cool? No, you're listening to me because I can get you money. That's the point. I'm going to show you how to make 20 grand this month. Like that, that's what you're here for. This is what you're listening to me for, right? So you're only dealing with tired Zillow for sale by owners. So what's a tired Zillow for sale by owner? You can write this down, screenshot it, whatever you want to do. But this is basically a Zillow for sale by owner that's been listed for over 100 days. They are sick of the property. They want to get rid of it. <laughs> Do you hear that? That's a motivated seller, right? And they finally want to sell it for a discount. That is what a tired FISBO is, a tired for sale by owner, Zillow for sale by owner. So what do you think about this? Like this, this works for on-market properties too. And so like, how do I wholesale on the MLS? I'm not, a. will frankly tell you, I'm not the Zillow for sale by owner, uh, like complete, like that's all I do, right? But I do do deals doing it and I love cold calling it. For MLS listed properties, I will do them, but like not consistent, like insane. I'm not doing 10 MLS deals a month, okay? But the ones I do are always tired MLS deals. So when I'd find good deals on the MLS, they're always tired. Like the things about, the realtor's about to lose their listing agreement or the seller's just like, okay, <laughs> this thing's been listed for 90 days. I gotta get rid of it, right? People, when they first, I, I want you to understand, when they first list the Zillow for sale by owner, they always want a crazy cuckoo price. I want 900 grand for my house. And then they keep cutting it by like 50K a month for like an insane amount of time. And after 100 days, they're like, okay, like I got to get rid of this thing. Like I did it too high. I'm willing just to take dis discount. And the thing is, everybody calls the first like 30 days. And everyone's like, okay, I'm getting a bunch of calls. There's a lot of people wanting this thing. I'm going to sell this thing quick. After 100 days, no one's calling them anymore. They're like, I got to get rid of this thing. And now they're willing to, to sell it for a discount, right? That is the point there. They're frankly sick of it. And this is when we can capitalize and make money, right? But how do you do this, right? You have to follow my script and rules. Just because you know how to go after tired for sale by owners now, doesn't mean that's like the only thing you have to do, right? That doesn't mean that it, you're going to get rich, right? You have to follow my script and rules. So when I get someone go, you know, they go on a one-on-one, they got questions from me and they're like, Zach, I did the for sale by owners, but I didn't get a deal or... I have a FISBO, but it's a terrible deal, right? Why is it a terrible deal? Because you probably did a FISBO that's like 50 days old. You got to let the thing simmer. You got to let it. It's like, um, where, where they, it's like aged fine wine, right? It's better with age, they say, right? Same thing. You got to let, you got to let the, you got to let it age, right? Some nice cheese. You got to let it age your bourbon. I don't know. I, I don't know how that stuff works, but like it, it has to age perfectly. And these Zillow four sellers have to age where they're just so motivated and the thing's been listing there just, honestly, it's rotting. Okay. The, the, there's getting no property or listings on it. So it's just rotting. Frankly, I'm telling you right now, you have to follow the scripts and you have to follow the rules. So what are my rules? What, what, what do I do, Zach? Like, how do I get rich? Tell me, right? So let me tell you how to get rich. Let me, let me tell you how to make a bunch of money, right? So number one, all right, how, what, what's the first thing I need to do? First thing, you have to find your market's median home price. This is rule number one. So what I want to do really quick is show you how to find your median home price. So let me, uh, excuse me a second here. Excuse me. I have a, I'm in my home studio. So I'm not going to be perfect on this. There we go. All right, cool. Sorry, I'm not at the uh, flip with Rick fancy schmancy studio. I'm actually at my... Uh, I'm at my house in my home studio, so <laughs> I gotta run around all day. We don't we don't got the crazy production uh, as we do like studio production. We do it over there, but uh, <laughs> as you can see here, first thing I want to do is find my median home price. And so, how do I find my median home price? I need to go to basically Zillow, Redfin, whatever service I want, and find what it is. So let's say I live in Houston, Texas, right? That's I've got some Houston people in the chat, right? If I want to go and find the Harris County, that's basically the county in Texas, the Harris County median home price, all I need to do is just search Harris County median home price, Texas. And I'm just going to click something stupid. I'm just going to go, not stupid, but like, I'm going to go to Zillow. And when I go on Zillow, I'm going to, this will pop up, right? It's going to give me like, it's not perfect, but it's pretty basic, right? Right here, it's going to be the Harris County home sales. And it's going to tell me the median home price in Harris County, Texas is $281,670. Uh oh, it's down 0.4%. Eh, it's probably closer to three or 4%, but it's fine. Zillow takes forever to get to that point. So what you have to understand is this, this 281 right here, this is our median home price. That means when I go and look at properties, I want to look at properties that are usually below this value, 
All right. This is what I'd like to do. I'd like to do properties in Houston that are below the median home price because when they're below the median home price, they're usually willing to sell for a discount. They're more motivated sellers and cash buyers usually want to go below that price, not above it. Now, if you got a multifamily, an apartment, a seven bedroom house that you can rent out on like, it's by the University of Houston, right? Good college complex renting out. Sure. Right. There's always exceptions to the rule. But you should understand that's the first thing we have to do. We have to stay below the median home price and we got to figure out what that is. So if you have questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, love to help you out. Love to talk to you. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's you just got to stay below it. All right. Just stay below it and you should be fine. So just FYI, that's number one. Find the median home price. We want to stay below it. Number one, we're going to go to Zillow and then we're going to go to the Zillow for sale by owner section. We're going to filter or we're going to filter it out. Go buy. Oh, for sale by owner or by owner, right? You can watch my live stream, see how I do it, right? We go by newest. And then, so step two, we go by newest. And step three, we're going to go to leads and we're going to keep scrolling, keep scrolling, 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 scrolling until we go to at least 100 days old. And that are the nice simmer, uh, simmered rotting leads. Right. I think it's beautiful, like a fine wine <laughs> to me. I look at it as like a fine wine because these leads are so sick and tired. And the, most of them want to be good deals. Now, a lot of them sometimes don't answer the phone. It's just been so old. But honestly, frankly, a lot of them are actually great deals. And so when you see me post a lot of these things, a lot of these are really good wholesaling deals. But they have to be older than 100 days. And they're kind of a pain in the butt, right? Some of them still want to sell for a crazy price. And a lot of conversations, a lot of rapport building. You guys watch the live streams. You see how I do it, right? It's frankly what the wholesaling business looks like. It's a lot of rapport building, hand-holding, stuff like that. But you got to do it, right? But once I go to there, I literally start calling. I, that, that's step four. I start cold calling and I, I get my phone and I literally just smile and dial. Boop, 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 boop. I, I dial, right? That's what I do. That's how I get the wholesaling deals. All right. And so what is my script for calling, right? So we start calling. This is when people start flipping out. They freak out. They start crying like, oh my gosh, I got a call. Ah! They start flipping out, right? This is frankly the easiest part. You're like an actor, you're like Leonardo DiCaprio over here, right? You got you got your lines, you got your script. You're just reading off a script, okay? So there's no like improv here. I mean, there's some improv, I guess, but like you're just calling people, you're saying questions in the line, and you're fine, right? And so let's kind of talk about our scripts for calling. When, when I'm calling somebody, I like to flow the conversation with certain questions because 95% of your Zillow Four Subliner, they, they all go the same way. That they all go down a really similar path on like other cold calling leads. And so this is a really easy one for me to teach. Like it's, it's pretty simple. So number one, I usually ask the same question every time. So, Hey, I'm actually calling my name, Zach. Is this the owner of one, two, three main street? Okay. Yes. I, I see it. I see your property listed here. And number one, I always ask like, Hey, is this property still for sale? And yeah, yeah, of course the property. So, okay, well, my first question, Mr. Seller, and I always get their name and I say their name, right? Because that's the best way to build rapport uh, first and foremost. And I always say, hey, I see there's pictures here, but they look like they're over 100 days old. Are the pictures still the same? Have they changed? Just like what's going on with the property, right? First thing I do is I let them know that I know the property's been listed for a while. Number one. Number two, I want to say this property's been here for, for so long. Like has anything changed? And they're going to they're gonna sigh like, and it's gonna, they're going to like, this is a lot of science, a lot of Zatkin wholesaling science, but it's honestly truth. It's the truth. It's changed. And they're going to realize in their brain, like that a lot of them sigh when I say that, like, yeah, this thing's been listed for a while, right? And it's so funny, but like a lot of them do. And some like to do a brave face, but they realize that. And that gives me the advantage in the conversation. And so now they understand that and they just have to realize that. I let them know that, hey, I'm not a realtor. I'm not any of these guys. Me and my partner, we're looking to buy the house for cash. So first I, I present their problem and then I present their solution. I'm a guy that me and my partner want to buy houses for cash. Who's your partner, your cash buyer? But you guys work together on it. So it's fine, right? Your partner's the cash buyer, you're the guy finding the deal. Perfect, right? You let them know who you are. Hey, I see you have a problem. I have a solution. This is going well, right? Like see, now we're flowing it down the path to the to the offer, right? And then from there, we kind of have a conversation. We, we just start going back and forth. We talk about the property, why the property hasn't sold yet. We're just having questions. How's the AC, the roof? 
is this a rental property? Is it not a rental property? Could it rent out? Maybe it's an Airbnb for us. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's a rental. Do I have to renovate it? Maybe I have to flip it. Like I just start having conversation. The truth is the more the person gets to know you just a little, like I, we're, we're not going on a first date over here, right? Well, we're just having a conversation. We're, we're, we're getting to know each other a little, right? Uh, we're, we're warming up to each other. And the more you're not trying to like have a full four hour conversation with the person, right? This should be all within 15 minutes, maybe 20 at most. I mean, I, I can do it like 10 because I'm kind of like to the point with these people, but you just talk about the property. You talk about their life. Hey, are they local? Are they not like, Oh my gosh, your parents died. That's how you got the house. I'm sorry. Right. Like have legit sympathy, like actually feel it. Right. Uh, and have the empathy for them. But like, you know, talk about the house and then you kind of get into like, I mean, if you have this house and you like it and you keep telling about how much you like the property, why are you even selling it? Because they're going to tell you like, oh, this is an amazing house. I'll look at the furniture, look at the, the kitchen. It, it's got a great view. It's all They say all these great things. I'm like, well, if it's so great, why don't you just keep it? And boom, this is stuff you just, you can just say it, right? And just say it like really like easy and simple. A lot of people think when I say it, I'm, I'm like, I'm saying it just off, off my head, but like I'm saying, cause it's scientifically, it's how I get deals. When I say that they're like, and then they, they go from the offensive. Now in the conversation, they go into the defense and they're like, well, I gotta get rid of it. Right. I just, I need the money or they say the true reason. Right. And so now they know the property's been, they realize the property's been sitting there. They know who I am. And now they're on the defense of trying to sell me on the deal. Like, Oh my God, well, I'm trying to sell it because of this. I have the upper hand on the conversation with the negotiations. When you have the upper hand on negotiations, you make the most money. Like that's what I'm here for, right? That's what I'm here to teach you. So then they want to sell the house. And now that is the jab, jab, and then the right hook question to really get in the knockout. So we get the best wholesaling deal possible. This is why I can get 50, 60, 70 guys. I've done a hundred thousand dollar price reductions because I asked this exact question. This is the exact question that you can ask every single Zillow for sale by owner. And once you set it up with the questions I say, you hit them so hard, they are at the most vulnerable position. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, like they're in the most worst position or the best position for you to accept your low ball offer. Now we're not coercing people. We're not making people sign anything, but we're just letting them know like the facts of the situation. Last question is, why hasn't the property sold yet, right? And this really brings the skeletons in the closet. A lot of these sellers like lying to you. They like you not knowing certain things or certain problems. Oh, the septic tank is overflowing. Out. They don't want to say these things. But once you say that question, then they are forced to explain it to you. So if you like it so much, you just want to get rid of the money. Like, why hasn't it sold yet? It's been 120 days. And oh, I love saying that. And it sounds like, oh, well, uh, uh, and they get a little sweaty, a little clammy and that's okay. But like you get the upper hand here and this is where you get the good wholesaling deals. And when you do that, you have the big advantage. And this is all, I, I go through all that stupid one, two, and three just to get to this point. And once I get to this point, boom, you get the best deal, right? So ask them again, this is my script. This is it. You can screen record this, replay it, whatever you want, but like, why hasn't the property sold yet then? It's, it's been 120 days, Mr. Seller. And just you shut up after that. You see what they have to say. And frankly, they don't have much to say. They freak out or whatever. And that is how you get the best deal. So think about that. And then from there, they, they, they'll go back and forth. And then you then you go into the most important part, which is the lowball offer, right? So, hey, you know, I know you got to sell it because of this. And it's got septic, man, it's got a septic tank problem. You know, I was talking to my partner about this property and, you know, he's telling me something about it and because it needs that much work and ugh, an extra 15 grand, I got to put in the septic tank. I, I know what he's going to tell me my partner, Rick, he, he's going to say he wants to buy this thing for like $65,000. Just shut up. See what he says, right? Good cop, bad cop for Ilson.com. You go there, you know what to say. And they're like, oh, 65, I can't do six. Or they're like, maybe I can do 65. Well, yeah. well hey, that, that's what he's at, right? I don't know about that price though, right? And, or it's like, well, that's what he wants. Like he, he He's crazy. He wants the most of the house, right? Like I, I get it. He wants to make the most money on it. 
we, we can make a deal. Like he's at 65. I know you're listed here for 120 K like what works for you. And then you can go back and forth on it. Right. Use whatever you want. You can just say, I'm talking to my partner and he said to do this offer, right? Good cop, bad cop. You blame the partner for the offer. Right. And really you can counter from there, negotiate, lock the contract up. Like that's what everyone knows. Right. But what you should understand about this too is your MAO or your max allowable offer, right? This is the most you can offer on the property, the most you can offer on the deal. You honestly want to offer about 70% of the listing price. You do not want to be above 70% of the listing price. Here's the problem. When you sell your deals to cash buyers from the Zillow 4 sell by owners, there's this magical thing. I call it the cash buyer FOMO syndrome. And what is the cash buyer FOMO syndrome. The quote, right? This is a uh, Zatkin uh, term, but it's true. When you go to a Zillow for subbinder, let's do really, really easy numbers. Okay. Let's, let's just do, wh why is my rule 70%? Everyone fights me on this, right? Let me get my phone. Let me just kind of explain this really quick, right? If a property is listed for a hundred thousand dollars, right? And let's say I offer to buy it for 80K, okay, 80% 80 of the MAO, right? That means I'm getting about a $20,000. That means I get 20K off of, you know, the listing price, right? I get a 20% reduction off of it, right? So about 80% of the MAO. I'm buying it cash, I'm paying closing costs. If that seller was to list it on the MLS, they would probably net 89 grand. That, that, that'd be my rough guess, right? which means they'd have to pay 11%. You're paying 11%, it, it, right? It, it's less of a good deal. But you have to understand is any Joe Schmo, any schmuck out here, is that a bad word, schmuck? Sorry if I offended anyone. I don't think that's a bad word, but I'll let it slide today. Any, any schmuck out here that can go out here and just offer cash. I, I can get anyone off the street. I get my grandpa. If he offered cash, he could easily get, 15% off the deal. He, he could get it for 85. So if I lock it up for 80, my cash buyer is going to be like, well, I can just call these people up and get it under contract for 85. Like, why am I even using you for? But if you locked it up for 65 and you're selling it for 70, he's like, okay, wow. Like you actually provided a good service. You negotiated a really good price on this. I couldn't even do that. You found this gem, uh, found this gem on the hayfield or whatever that uh, analogy is. I'll pay you that, right? So you got to remember cash buyers pay you because you do things that they can't do. So if you get a deal that's marginal that any Joe Schmo can go get, they don't want to pay you on it. Cash buyers want to pay you on deals that they can't get themselves. Like they can't, they don't want to go out here and drive for dollars. They go, don't want to cold call all these leads and reverse drive for dollars and get a deal at 70% MAO. They don't want to do that, right? They can't. They, they're used to 85% like MLS properties. And so they, they'll pay us these 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, hundred thousand dollar assignment fees because we can do what they can't do. And so when a cash buyer, any cash buyer in the world can go and get a 15, 20% discount on a Zillow for sub owner. It's actually really easy. You can go call, you'll get discounts all day on these people because you're buying a cash, right? You're offering closing costs. But once you start getting into the territory of below 70% of the MAO, you can make money. And so you're, if you can get at least 70% off the listing price, let's do another cash uh, equation. Anyone in the comments can kind of look this up. If the deal is $200,000, just divide, multiply that by 70%. That means basically if you can get the deal for 140 grand, uh, basically anything below that is profit for you. And a cash buyer will be like, okay, that's a great deal, right? And remember, listing price is not ARV. Listing price is still ridiculous. So 70%... That's what you got to do. And you got to understand that most sellers will not want to accept your that 70% offer. That's way too low. And 70% is only, let me repeat, only for Zillow for sale by owners. That being said, the reason why you have to get so low because cash buyers will not want to even touch that deal if it's not even close to 70% of the MAO. They get jealous. They actually know the price. You don't, you can't hide. Uh, the price from them, right? You have to get so low that, okay, that makes sense, right? It's listed for a hundred. You're selling for 75. Okay. Wow. You probably got a really good deal on that. I'll willing to pay, right? I'm a cash buyer too. And so I will pay wholesalers 20, $30,000 if they could bring an insane great deal for me, but it's gotta be a good deal. And so in Zillow for sale by owners, 
You got to be below 70% of the listing price. You got to make a lot of low ball offers, but they'll go in. They're, if you're really good, they're like three pointers, right? Kobe had like a 35, and quote me wrong, like a 35, maybe 40% three point average. So every three pointer he made, at minimum, 60% of them did not go in. Does that mean he's a bad basketball player? Does that mean he sucked at basketball? No, he's one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And he didn't make most of his shots. What does that mean? If you can just make, an, if you take enough shots, you'll make up a lot of points. And so you make a lot of shots of these 70% MAOs, 30, 40% of them, if you're really good, go in. That's all you want. Like, remember, every shot you make is five, 10, 15, $20,000. So if you make 10 shots and only two go in, it's 15 grand for the month. That ain't bad. That's not, that's not terrible, right? And that is what I'm talking about. Like, you don't have to put everyone in, but you just got to be in the right position. And guess what you do? You do that for lead number one. And then for every lead over 100 days, you just call them all in your local market. Boom. And simple as that, right? Like, that, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Like, that's the rule. The thing is, most wholesalers don't want to do that. They just want to blindly go to for sale owners, just rip it and spit out offers all day, and then they get offended, right? This is how most wholesalers cold call. And I, I want you to understand this is so much different than like the average one, right? It's like this. Okay. Dial, dial, dial. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Hello. Is this the owner of 123 Main Street? Will he take $50,000 on the deal? No. Okay. Zach sucks. That's what they do. The thing was listed for 200K. Will you, will you sell it for $50,000? That's a terrible approach. It's it's terrible. I, I, I don't get it. It makes, it makes zero sense. That's a terrible way to do things. There's a little bit of whining and dining with these people, right? That's how every seller is. You got to be a little professional, right? You got you to have nice conversations, but like you got to be a little nicer, right? You, hey, tell me a little about the house. Oh, okay. Why isn't it sold there? You have to set it up, right? So you guys know me and Rick, we're big on fishing. We love fishing. Okay, I love fishing, right? I can't just go out here, put a hot dog on a hook, and then go catch a marlin. All right, like that's not how it works. You, you gotta put some preparation into it, right? You gotta rig up the bait. You gotta do all these great things. All right, you gotta go out in the boat. You gotta rig it out. You gotta put the outriggers on, right? You got then you gotta troll around the right spots. Maybe, maybe you got some shallow water. Maybe some deep water. You find where the other fish are going. It's a little more complicated, but once you catch that mega awesome cool fish, it's pretty gangster. And that's the same thing for getting a mega wholesaling deal. You make $40,000, $50,000 on a deal, you're going to have to set it up a little. I know it's going to take some time, but the time is, it, these are $15,000, $20,000 deals. Stop being lazy. Work your butt off. Do the right thing. Train. Become the man or woman you know you need to be. Guys, the lazy people, the people that don't want to work hard, the people that don't want to actually listen to what I have to say, they ain't going to get rich. They had the ones making 100K this year. They had the ones making millions of dollars this year. You have to be a disciplined, well-oiled machine that will call these leads and call other leads and do what I say. You have to be a person that makes a plan, executes that action, and consistently goes out here and makes money. If you get marketing done, you get leads, you're going to get cash, you're going to get money. But the person that says, oh, I'm going to cold call a little today, or oh, it's a hard day today. No, I don't care. You got to get rich. This is your time. This is your time. This ain't, it ain't tomorrow. Yesterday you said tomorrow. This is the time right now to get rich in wholesaling. This is the time. You got to repeat and you got to keep going. You're doing this for you. You're not doing this for me. You're not doing this for any. You're doing this for you. You're doing this to get rich. Okay. You don't go out here, watch my live streams, just sit on your butt all day and do nothing. You got to go out here and actually mark. You have to go and do it. Everyone that gets successful in wholesaling, you see the checks, you see me do it. You see everyone else do it. They all worked hard. So why do you think you're different? You got to go and work hard. I, there's not one person that is a lazy bum that doesn't make a lot of money in this business. You, If all the lazy bums aren't making money, then don't be that person. Be the opposite. There's not, I don't know one person that calls every single Zilla for sub owner that is over hundred days old for a year straight that doesn't get wholesaling deals. I don't know one. There's not one. Shocker, shocker that the lazy people don't get deals and the people that aren't lazy that consistently show up every single day actually do deals. Why is that? Because they want to work hard. They listen to me. You got to do it.
And so like, how do I do it right? You want to learn more guys? <laughs> Every other Tuesday, I pretty much go on the flip with Rick YouTube channel, which is a different channel than this channel right now. And I, I take my dang phone right here and I call and I sit, I literally put my money where my stinking mouth is. And I call these Zillow for sub by owners and I do deals and I lock up deals and I make off. And now sometimes on there, I won't get a deal. That's how it works. I only have like an hour to call, right? But eventually you see me do at least eight hours. I'm always going to get a good deal on it, right? And that's the way you do it. If you put 40 hours a week to just calling these deals, you're going to get deals, right? All I got to do is probably put three or four hours in just to get a $20,000 in deals, right? Some of these deals are amazing. Yeah, just get on that dang phone and you make calls. That's it. What are you guys scared for? You're scared to make money. You're scared to get rich. You're scared to change your family's life. You're scared to go and make financial freedom. What are you scared of? If you're scared to go out here and call, I don't know. Why do I sit on my butt and, and teach you guys wholesaling? So you, do I go into these live streams so you can just sit on your butt all day and not actually take action, not get rich? No, I, I, I go out here because I truly believe you can do it. I truly believe you can actually go out here and make a change in your life. I truly believe you can go out here and smile and dial. Who cares you got an accent? Who cares what you look like? Who cares how old you are? It doesn't matter. The only thing that cares at all is how much work you're willing to put in. Nobody cares about your accent. Nobody cares about any of that stupid stuff. The only thing that matters is how much work you're going to put in. So guys, put in the work. You'll do, you guys see me do it. So if you want to see me do it, Tuesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, I cold call live. Flip with our YouTube channel. Go there. I put my money where my mouth is every single time. The haters, they never, they're never there. They're never there when I lock up deals. Oh, they, they all cry. Oh. Zach did good again. Oh no. Oh, I hate him. I hate him being successful. They all pray on my downfall, but every single time I show up and because I show up, I do deals in front of you. Every single like clockwork, every single time I consistently show up, I'm consistently going to do deals in the live stream. Guess what that means? If Zach can consistently show up and he can consistently do deals, I can do the same thing. Guys, I go into. <sighs> I go into your own city. There's people out here. I go, I go, I've never wholesaled in some of these cities. I'll go into your city. I went to Vermont last year on a Zillow for sale. And I said, let's do Vermont on the spinner wheel. I went into somebody's city and I made money and I did wholesaling deals. I go into your own city where I've never been my entire life. And I'll get wholesaling deals because you were too lazy to call that lead yourself. That lead was sitting there on Zillow, just sitting there waiting for someone to make 15, 20 K. Just sitting there on the internet publicly for anyone to do. But I decided to go into your own city and make money and get food out of your mouth because you're too much of a lazy bum to go do it yourself. Guys, the deals are out there. Are you willing to go out here and do it? I challenge everybody. Call all the Zillow Forest Club owners that are over 100 days old and see what happens. Well, if everyone does that, Tuesday is going to be a little more difficult for me. But hey, I like a challenge, right? I, I, I like a challenge. I like uh, dealing with competition. I'm not calling you guys competition, but like, I do it. So if you want to see me Tuesday, I'll do it. I'm just saying. Zilla for sale by owners. There's money there, guys. And so the last question is like, you know, what do I do when I run out of leads? Like what's, oh no, what do I do, right? Well, when you run out of leads, you can't go and expand your territory if you don't know the buyers. And so let's for, let's say, for example, you do Harris County. Okay, I ran out of Harris County. I called all the Zilla for sale by owners. Okay, well, then go to the other list, right? You did all the lists for a hundred days. I think that's the biggest question because here's the problem. People have this like addiction. They, they, they get pretty comfortable doing the Fizbos and they don't do anything else. You can make 20K a month, but like it's very hard to consistently get deals every single month by only doing Fizbos. It's only like a small part, right? You got to do other leads. You got to do the government lists. You got to do paid lists. You got to drive for dollars. You got to reverse drive for dollars, right? You got to do digital banded signs, regular band. There's so many other marketing you got to do. But I'm just saying for people starting out, you want to get your first deal cold calling, Zillow for sub owners are amazing, but you will run out. There's not an insane like plethora of these type of leads out there, right? There's, there's enough, there's two to three hours a, a week of that kind of calling, but there's 40 extra hours if you want to do a full-time work on wholesaling to do it. So when you run out of these leads, I'd go to the government list first, the tax liens, the tax delinquencies, the probates, the code violations, the water shutoffs, the fire damage properties, right? All these type of lists, I'd probably be calling those lists too. Uh, when I run out of leads, I'll drive for dollars. I want you guys to cold call those leads. I want you to reverse drive for dollars those leads. And they're actually easier in my opinion. And you'll get way more deals doing that. But like when you run out of leads, don't be like, okay, I'm going to go cold call Dallas now. I'm going to cold call Oklahoma. I'm going to cold call the Fizbos in New York. I'm going to do blah, blah, blah. 
Don't do that. That's a terrible mindset thing. I, I help a lot of wholesalers out. That is not what you should be doing. What you should do is do stick in Harris County if you're in Harris County and start doing the FISBOs, FISBOs first, reverse drive for dollars, drawing for dollars, government list, paid lists, and then from there, you can even JV there, right? That's what you have to do. Do not call places that you don't have buyers in. Buyers are your customers. You locked up a deal, great. You locked up a deal in, um, what, Starville, Texas, where there's four people that live there and there's no buyers. Like, oh, great, good job. You have to have buyers, guys. Like, if there's no buyers, you ain't gonna, no one's going to deal with your deal, right? No one's going to go actually out here and buy your deal. So you have to have buyers where you're calling and you'll do well, right? Every single time. So, guys, if you, I'm talking to you, if you are going to go out here and cold call all of the tired, the tired Zillow for sale by owners, put in the comments right now. I want to hear it. And I am going to call every single tired Zillow for sale by owner over a hundred days old in my market tomorrow. I want you guys, I think everyone can get through it. If you do a couple of days, I want you guys to put in the comments, put words to action, write it down on a piece of paper. And if you're even more dedicated, put a sticky note. Okay. I grab a, uh, grab a sticky note right here. I want you to write, I will call every Zillow for sub owner in my County over hundred days old, and then put it on your phone. And I know it's going to be annoying, but like put it on your phone, like put it right here on your phone. And that sticky note does not go off your phone until you do it. I promise you it would be kind of annoying. And you're going to see it every time you're on your stupid phone with scrolling through TikTok, look, watching kitty vi cat videos, little kitties. Like, oh, it's a cute cat. This, I got to get rid of the sticky note. I got to actually go do work, right? That's what you do, right? I had, uh, I had one individual um, I, I was talking to, and he told me he was scared to co call the Zillow for sale by owners. He was scared. And this is a, a man I was talking to, and he he was just so scared to talk. He was so scared to start. And I think a lot of people are like that. They're so scared to start calling these leads. And this is one extra exercise you guys can do. I, I told him, and I'm still talking to him. I said, why don't you call the for sale by owners today? And he said, quote, I forgot. I was, it, it, it is a subconscious excuse of why you don't want to do it, right? You're scared, but you're just going to say, oh, I forgot today, right? Guess what? What you need to do, uh, that's why I told this guy. I want you guys, what, what, what do you think I told him? To make sure he would make offers so he wasn't going to make excuses anymore. I literally told him this. I said, okay. So you keep forgetting to make offers and cold call and Zillow for somewhere. As I said this, you're not going to be able to eat any dinner tonight unless you cold call and make five FISBO offers on 100 plus old day leads. This man looked at me like, what? What are you talking about? I said, no. You are not going to eat dinner tonight until you cold call the Zillow for sub owner list. If you are so scared to talk to sellers, if you are more scared to talk to a Zillow for sub owner than you are to eat dinner, you'll starve. And I want you, you and you'll get to the point where you haven't eaten three days where, okay, I'm so hungry. I'm going to call guys. This is all I want you guys to know. This is a mindset. If you are a man or woman right now watching this, your descendants from men and women that literally how to deal with bears and saber tooth tigers and, and these crazy animals and crocodiles and alligators chomping at you just so you can get a berry off a tree. Okay. This is who you're a descendant of. And we all basically come from the same, uh, people, right? Like, I mean, you, you go down the line, right? Um, right. And so like, we all have to fight these crazy animals just to survive. And so you get to the point where like, yeah, I'm scared because there's tigers out in the wild, but if I don't eat, I'm going to die. And then you get to the point where you overcome your fear because you don't want to starve. The human brain, the software in our brain is the same software that's been running for tens and hundreds of thousands of years. And the problem is you got the, the new world has like screwed up your brain and how your dopamine and all this stuff works. You're on TikTok. That's how you get pleasure in life. What you have to do right now is just tell yourself if you're scared to call the Zilla Force sub owner. I'm not going to eat dinner unless I make five offers. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see his results, but I'm telling you, you're, 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 you might not eat for a night. You're, by night two, you haven't eaten in two days, you're going to get, oh, okay, I'm starving. I'm going to call so I can finally eat, right? It just, it changes your mindset because you don't go from, you go into, I don't want to, I'm uncomfortable to like, I'm in survival mode. And you're not going to die making offers. <laughs> I hope you know. 
uh, but you might if you don't eat, right? And that just changes your mindset on things. And so I want people to understand that like, if you're scared to call, and I, so, I know some people watching this are scared to call, change your survival mode. Change the way you're thinking. I think we'll make, make a big change in your life. So uh, I see a lot of people on here. Uh, Yavani, what's up, Yavani? I'm going to call all the Fizbos in my county for over 100 days old. Love to see that. Congrats. Uh, the broke investor said, I'm calling all these tired <laughs> tomorrow at 2 p.m. I love seeing it. Uh, what if you don't have enough leads for a Fizbo? Uh, Lapolja, I don't think you watched this live stream. If you have one lead, that's enough. Call them. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Love to see it. Uh, Joseph is going to call every single day tomorrow. Love to see it. Love to see it. I love the people taking action, taking commitments. Love to see it. Homes for sale M, uh, for MA. Congratulations. I appreciate you actually going on here and taking action. So uh, let me answer some questions. We're going to do some one-on-ones today too, obviously. I want to help the people out. And uh, yeah. Chevelle says, are you saying to call into a different market every time we call Fizbos? No, just only call for the ones in your county. Uh, let's see. Uh, next uh, Tuesday is going to be my next live cold call. That's why I did th I did this video today to prepare everybody for when I do a live cold call. Now you're watching this on the Zach and YouTube channel, right? The Zach and YouTube channel only, only goes live now on Sundays. So if you want to watch my live cold call, you're going to have to go to the flip with Rick YouTube channel. It's F L I P W I T H F L I P. Wait, bleh. <laughs> you guys can tell this is live. F L I P. W I T H R I C K. Search that flip with Rick on YouTube. That is where the live streams are going to be for my cold call. It's going to be on Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern. Just make you make sure you subscribe to all the channels. Make sure you hit the bell notification. Um, that's it. Let's see. Uh, let's see here. Love these questions. It's a good one. Houston in the house. What's up, Kenny? Uh, love listening to Kenny here. Uh, he's a good wholesaler. Um, he does like creative deals too. Let's see. Okay. Terry uh, posted six cash for home signs. Got two cash buyers. Love it, love it, love it. Uh, what is up, everyone? And how's it going, Terry? I got a lot of great comments on here. Appreciate it. Hey, Punk Steppa. Stoppa? Punk Stoppa. Says that got a $60,000 price reduction using the method Zach uses. Genius. See? It works. I'm telling you. It works. Uh, Bank trip says, what are the odds you can find some in JV with the middle of nowhere? Very low. You have to have at least 40 to 50,000 people in the city for there to be a decent amount of buyers. Uh, I won't even, I, I won't even JV unless it meets that criteria. So uh, Adam's got a good question here. Then we're getting the one-on-ones, you know, Adam says, how do I close my first deal in two weeks or less to pay the rent? I would say if you want to get a deal in two weeks or less, you're, it's a tough one. You are going to have to reverse drive for dollars and co-call. No, you're going to have to pr reverse drive for dollars and two weeks. I would door knock the pre foreclosures because there's an auction and you can do it really fast. I would do those too. Uh, we got to make it simple. We can't be complicated on this. So yeah. Uh, Jabba says that's such a good question. So I said one more, but it is a good one. Do cash buyers care if rents are Section 8? Yes, they do. Some cash buyers like Section 8. Some of them don't. I personally don't like taking money from the government. Uh, maybe I'm a capitalist. That's why. But uh, I, I, I don't like the Section 8 on that. So, yeah, that's just my personal opinion. All right. So, uh, oh, my gosh. Ashton said uh, I watched all the other 40 cold calling videos. I got, I got a lot of live cold calls, so I'd love to see it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a link. This is my streamer link. Uh, I can't guarantee what people say on here. So FYI, uh, but if they're mean, I take them off. Uh, so yeah, so this is the stream link. You want to hop on and talk to me. I will talk to anybody on here and make you a better wholesaler. So uh, first off, first person we got, we got uh, CK in the building. CK. You. What's up, bro? I'm blessed, man. What's up? How can I help you out? What do you say? How can I help you out today? Yeah, yeah, I'm good, man. How about you? I'm good. How can I help you be a better wholesaler today? Uh, two questions, man. I get about your get about your hair real quick. So, first question is, how do you put two uh, deals on one contract? Because I got um, some land that this dude is looking to sell, but uh, he wants to sell two of them. So, 
Okay. So you can't do two, I mean, you theoretically can, but you want to, you want a contract for every property. So basically, actually, let me ask you this question. Are these two properties have two different deeds? Um, I don't know what you mean by that, but as one owner, so, two parcels of land. So basically, um, a deed is basically, I mean, it's the piece of paper from, I mean, basically it, it can be from anything, but like it's showing on the government, you can put a warranty deed showing that you're the owner of the property, right? I'm not getting into the full legal definitions, but usually a deed will show you I'm the owner of this part of a property. So if right. I own two houses, I usually have two different deeds. Right. And so you can look them up by actually asking the person or actually looking up the deed online. I can tell you well, there's probably uh, two deeds. Yeah, when I look up uh, both of the properties, they got the same dude name on it. It's not like no company yes. or nothing like that. But were the purchase prices on the uh, same day? The purchase uh, dates? Uh, that, I'm not sure. I didn't look at that. Okay, you can look that up. The title company can actually help you out with this, but you're going to have to have two separate contracts most likely. For sure. So you just do a price on this one and price on that one. Most likely, you're going to have two different buyers in those deals. Unless they're next door to each other. Are they next door to each other? Um, kind of like vacant land, house, vacant land. There's most likely going to be different uh, separate deeds. Right. And so sometimes they can move the deed all, all into one deed, but most likely not. So you're going to have to figure that out. Uh, do you know how to look up the property on the property appraiser website? Yes. So look up all the properties and see if they're all under the same uh, parcel uh, basically the property legal description. If they have different property legal descriptions and different addresses, you're probably going to have to do separate contracts for every single one. For sure. Okay. Second thing is, uh, he said he owes some money on it, but I just wanted to be sure like exactly what this, exactly what's the amount of it is. So uh, how do I do my own title search? So if you can do your own title search. So what county are you in? Cook County. Cook Chicago. County? Cook County, Illinois. Okay. All right. So all you have to do is go to Cook County Public Records, search his name on the public record, and then basically see what's up with it, right? So for example, CK, if your name was Charles Klein, I hopefully that's not your name. <laughs> uh, but like, I'm just like, let's close, close. Close. okay. Let's say your name is Charles Kleinberg. Okay. Right. I'm going to look up Kleinberg Charles, and I'm going to see if you have any liens or anything on you. If you own a property, you usually will have a mortgage on the house for $125,000 and you're selling it for 150, which means usually you'll get 25 grand at closing, right? So 150, you owe 125 to the bank, you get the extra 25, right? Now, if roughly that $125,000 mortgage was 10 years ago, you're gonna have to read the mortgage and see what the amortization is and then kind of go from there. Maybe he'll, he'll get a 50 grand at closing, right? Uh, sometimes there's a lien. So maybe the Illinois state revenue put a $5,000 lien because he didn't pay his taxes. The internal revenue service might put a lien on the property. Uh, the property appraiser or the city might put a lien on the house, right? You can see all the liens and the amounts. Uh, it might be Bank of America because he didn't pay his credit card for five grand, right? Usually that's how most people do their title searches. Uh, where did they record a lien on the property? And the property will be, um, be lien on the property, uh, not the person. For sure. When it sells, that'll have to be paid off. Okay. Yeah, because it looked like it's between you and me, county. Don't worry about it because the title company will be doing that, not you. But roughly, it's it's nice to know. Like, hey, if he has one hundred twenty five thousand mortgage and a ten thousand dollar lien, and he wants to sell it for a hundred and he wants to make money off of it, he's he's not going to, right? Uh, so sure. it's smart, still smart to do. For sure. Okay. All right. Well, that was all my questions, man. I do got some criticism for you. Right. All right. Tell me. Listen, listen. I love you. I love uh your father, Rick. I love what you guys are doing. And I'm seeing that box in the back. I see In N Out Burger. It is trash, bro. I ate some In N Out Burger, maybe like on my birthday in March. I don't know what the hype is. I don't know why it's, why people go crazy for it. It's trash, man. Super trash. Dude, it is a I love In N Out Burger, man. <laughs> I don't know why, man. You bet I'm going to McDonald's, man, for uh, a better okay, meal. I've had real estate investors invite me out to the fanciest Michelin star restaurants. I've been everywhere. 
I, I have been to the nicest places. I've been in New York City, these crazy places. I've been everywhere. I've gotten fresh tuna off of Mexico, fresh off the in and out. <laughs> it's not my it's not my favorite food of all time, right? My favorite food's probably right. honestly fish that's like fresh off the ocean. But like for a burger man, it's pretty dang good. Um, but wait, what is it? What a burger, what's your favorite food? Uh, I mean, hey, I'm just I eat anything, man. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm here in Chicago, I would say the best burger for me, I go to the DMK. Gourmet right, go, style, Chicago, they make the meat. You know what I'm saying? Fire. Yeah. All right. Fire. But thank you, bro, man. I appreciate uh, you guys Thanks, having the uh, live stream. All right, appreciate it. Let me know if you need help with anything else. All right, you're always invited on here. Yes, sir. Peace. All right, appreciate it. I don't know where that guy was going with it. I was like, oh, is he? Oh, do we, get, we got someone on here. Is someone going to be a hater? No, he's not. He's, he's being funny, man. I appreciate it. I love, I'll tell you, I loved in and out burger. I think I like it only because like, you know, it's like forbidden for me because I'm in Florida. So like when I go there, it's like, oh my God, I can only eat this when I'm here. So I think I enjoy it personally because it's like, I'm only going to eat this once every other year or like, I was like, so like you savor it. Right. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, this can never happen again for like another year. Right. I think that's why I personally like it. Psycho it's psychological in my brain, probably. Um, I'm pretty stupid like that, but I don't know. Rollo, what's up? What's up? How are you? I'm good. What's uh, up? How can I help you out today, man? I just had a quick question. I was like, so when I was doing my some of my cold calls on uh, Google Voice, when like I call them, if they don't pick up, when they try to return the call, like it doesn't ring on my phone or like okay. anywhere. Well, first of all, I can't run customer service uh, for Google Voice, but I can give you some tips. Mm -hmm. So if it's not dialing, you might be spam. So one thing I can tell you is I just probably get to try to get a new phone number on Google Voice. That usually will help. Uh, reset your phone. Uh, go off airplane mode. Um, I don't tell you on that. Google Voice usually works really well, man. Try to forward it on like a mom your sisters or your friend's phone and see if that works um no, I mean, that's like, something i can tell you uh when they no like sometimes they just don't pick up because they don't pick up but like uh when they call me back like i i see later they call me back but like it doesn't ring on my phone like I would a call phone google's call. customer support all right usually i just get a new phone number and that fixes it okay. um i log out i go incognito window that's usually what I do. Try incognito window. That usually is probably, the, it clears your cookies out. It's probably the best one, I'd say. Okay. Go try that out. Right. Sorry, I wish I could tell you something better. I'm not the uh, tech guy on that. All right. All right. Appreciate it, man. All right, that's it. Oh, all right. DeAndre. Oh, hey, Zach. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you, too. Um, yeah, so I've been following uh, you and your dad um, for a while. Uh, yeah, I've been in the Augusta market for around a month or so, nice. and I've been pulling every single lead, like literally everything. I pulled fire damage properties, water shutoffs, code violations, everything. And usually I'm, I'm calling like 20, 25 to 20 a day because I have a full-time job. So okay. my question is, uh, I haven't been seeing much luck in Augusta. Uh, it's Richmond County. I'm not sure if you, you probably have. I, I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm just not seeing much luck. Uh, I'm just not much seeing much luck there. Like I've been, I've been cold calling and every single time somebody does pick up, we go over stuff. They just, they ask me like, oh, like the price immediately. Or like, like you, you could tell like a bunch of already people already hit them all up. Like even a couple of days ago, I just got like, uh, what was the water shut off? Yeah, I think I got the water shut off list. And uh, I was calling them and a, a bunch of people, they already got hit up. And and not only that, a lot of people I called, uh, like, so I, I don't have any like paid, like no prop stream, no nothing. So what I'm doing now is I just go on the, the, the appraiser website and I find out who owns it. Then I go on true people search. And a lot of the times uh, I realize like the number's just like completely wrong. And it's like half of the things and it, and it takes like, like three minutes for, for, for one. And it's like a list of a hundred. So my question is, should I just go out and, uh, pay for skip trace, skip tracing and pay for prop stream at this point? Because I'm trying to do it the freeway. 
and like I, I feel like it might not be working or it might it might just be the market like I'm, I'm not sure like I've been trying for a month now so yeah okay well first of all DeAndre thanks for hopping on here nice to meet you so let's kind of let's, let's do one thing at a time mm. you're not in New York City you're not in LA you're not in Miami so like it's not the market all right so let, let's just let's chill out for a second here yeah let's figure out the way I work and the way I help most people and the way I made the most money is by sitting down analytically and looking at the, the, the board, right? I got to see where we're playing checkers, right? I got to look at the board, maybe chess. So first and foremost, do you live in Augusta? Uh, no, I live in Toronto, Canada, actually. All right. I like Toronto. That's, that's a cool place, but not good for wholesaling. Yeah. London is like, okay in Ontario, but like outside of that, like not good. So you're, you're too out East. Um, Augusta's decent, man. So let's talk about what you've done. So let's talk about, let's do a case study. Last seven days. Tell me everything you've done the last seven days in marketing. Uh, so last seven days, I went on Craigslist. I made a post. Okay. Uh, a post? It, oh, yeah. I made, I made a one, one post for... That's not enough. Oh, that's not enough? A post a day. Mm. A. Oh, you can post a day? You got to be Canadian. A. A post a day. A post a day. A a post a day. A okay, mm -hmm. bro. You gotta consistently post on there. You cannot make one post, dude. It is every single day. Oh, I didn't know it was over. Like I thought, because in in Canada, if you go on to Gigi, you post once. It's just basically like you know, it's just you don't really have to. I guess because the population is like ten times ours, so I guess that makes sense. Dude, you need to be. I. I you might be new. I don't know you're new on the channel, dude. I have always preached go hard in the stinking paint mm -hmm. on marketing and you do not become relentless. All right. So you got to post every day on there, post every day on the Facebook group. You have to call every day, you have to text every day. You have to, you have to go hard in the paint, man, because somebody in Augusta yeah. wants it more than you. And if they want it more than you, they will do it every day. And if every you don't want it bad enough, you won't do it every day. And so that's what you got to be thinking, right? So Let's talk about this. So DeAndre, all right, we got number one. We got uh, one post on Craigslist. Give me the other marketing you did. Yeah. Uh, other marketing I did. Oh yeah. So I've been cold calling for the most part. I don't think I've I've done texts, but they they. I think I've been marked as spam or something because I they're not really um getting back to me. How many texts are you doing in a week? Uh, in a week, probably around maybe 70 or so. I, I'm not, uh, yeah, so it wouldn't be that much. Okay. No, oh, no, in a whole entire week. In a week. Uh, it would be, I think it would be close to 200 around, around that. Yeah, it wouldn't be that much. Okay. So, all right. How many calls are we talking? Calls 20. 20 to 25 a day. I, I, and I, yeah, I should probably be upping the ante on the calls, but I think it's just cause it takes a while to, to, um, for me to skip trace them. So it's just like, in, and all in all, it takes like around maybe like two hours for the skip trace and the calls together. So yeah. You're telling me it takes you an hour to skip trace 25. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would, I would say so because for me, I have to, for true people search, it doesn't work uh, for me immediately. So like I have a very slow computer. So it like when I, when I enter it on like, like my computer and all that stuff, I have to uh, like, like wait for what it. What kind to of phone do you have? How much money? Right now I have. No, what kind of phone do you have? A phone. I have a iPhone 4S. Okay. I know. It's, 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 I don't it's, really it's, care, dude. Well, iPhone broke. That one's probably faster than your slow computer. I, I would it, probably it, do TrueFuelSearch.com on Chrome. Boom. It, it is. Chrome solved. You'll be faster on that. Oh, yeah. So, so TrueFuelSearch.com on Chrome. That'll be a lot better. Okay. That makes sense, then. Uh, two hours for 25 leads is really sad. I'm not saying anything meaning. I, I, I'm just being on. You need to pump those numbers. I want Brutal honesty. That's that's what I want at this point. I would want, you know, like I want. Exactly. I mean, man, let, let, let me be honest with you, man. You, mm -hmm. You're doing 25 calls a day and you're not getting anywhere. That that's not going to help you at all. Mm -hmm. I hate to tell you. Um, you're gonna have to pump those numbers up. You're using a slow computer as an excuse. I don't like that. 
Yeah. Uh, you got libraries in Canada, right? Yeah. I'd go to Canada and do that. Y'all got free healthcare there. I think you guys got libraries. So go out here and use a library on a faster computer and skip trace doing that. Uh, you should be doing, you should be going a lot faster with it. It's copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. I really don't know what the issue with you there is. Um, yeah, you, you got to pump up those numbers, man. I would be closer to 100 a day if I were you. Um, yeah. And if you learn how to be more efficient, you probably can. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. I, I feel like maybe I'm just holding my own self back now that I'm talking with you. I'm realizing stuff. Like, I feel like I'm probably just holding my own mindset back now because, you know, like I've, I, 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 I could probably just go to the library and do something. Yeah, Andre. Yeah. Is that a Jamaican flag behind you? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, you can Your see that. from Jamaica? Yeah, my, my background is Jamaican, yeah. Uh, when I went to Jamaica, man, I went to uh, Kingston. And then what, what's the big city on the east? Um, I forgot where. It, they used to have a port there. Um, it was port like, Roy? Or port Moore? Yeah, I think so. And then I hung out there for a little bit. Mm. Those people are one of the most hardest working people. They'll work all stinking day. Yeah. Building houses and stuff inside of Kingston. Those mm -hmm. people work so dang hard and they always have a smile on their face, right? You have you been you've been in, have you been in Jamaica? Yeah, I have been in Jamaica. Those people work so hard and it's so hot there. Yeah. I, it's insane. So did your family go to Canada from Jamaica for a better life? Uh yes. So they made a sacrifice for you, right? Mm -hmm. I've had grandparents that did the same exact thing, not Jamaica, obviously, but like they, they went to America for, uh, and Canada's similar, right? For a better life. And I think it's, you have a duty on your shoulders to go work as hard as you can to make a better life on top of what your parents did for you. Mm -hmm. And so your duty right now is to pump up your marketing numbers and get wholesaling deals. That's what I truly believe. And if you work just as hard as, from my experience, the Jamaicans I've seen there, man, they work harder than Americans, dude. Like, uh, where I'm at right now, I'm in South Florida. So there's actually a lot of Jamaican immigrants and my, I have a lot of friends from Jamaica and Haiti. Dude, yeah. Those parents work insane. Like they, 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 they work so much harder than the Americans. So when I got people working on my properties and they're Jamaican, man, do they, they work twice as hard than everyone else. Yeah. You know why? Cause it's in their blood. Like it, it's hard work and you know, and so I think you got it in your blood, man. It's your whole family values are like that, man. So I, you have it in you to work hard and succeed thanks so you got this man yeah i got it i love jamaica man uh it's so peaceful there you got the mountains and it's so flat in florida but uh i tell you man you got this thanks that's that's all i really need you know what that's probably i didn't i didn't really need to i feel like i called kind of to complain i'm not gonna lie but you know like man not 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 now that i see where where i need to go you can't complain man yeah, but because you could be in you can be in Kingston right now. Or what are you in a better position right now in your life? You're a better position in Canada. Exactly. Yeah. There's no complaining, man. No complaining. I just I was just making excuses. Now I think about That's it. That's it. Yeah. That was holding me back. Thank you so much, Jeff. All right, man. I'm telling you, your parents didn't bring you all the way here for you to sit around and complain. Exactly. They did it for you to be a better person. I know you have that in you. So go after it, man. You got this, dude. Thanks. All right, let's, let's try a hundred, all right? I will. I'm All gonna right. Go. Do your best, man. I believe in Thanks. you. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm not gassing the guy out. I'm telling you, Jamaica is amazing of a place. Um, it's actually really safe, too. I, I mean, it's not the safest country in the world, obviously, but like it's pretty safe there. Uh, I've been to some sketchy places. Uh, Jamaica's not it. It's beautiful there, man. Those people work so hard. It's, it's so cool. But I'm telling you, you, everybody here deserves to work hard. Because your family has gone through a lot for you to get to the point we're at now and got to get going. Ivy, what is up? Hey, what's up, man? I'm blessed. What's up? How can I help you out? Uh, yeah, so I've been um, virtually calling a couple markets in PA. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I called two, pre two or what is it, offices or asked for to pull pre-foreclosures two two separate um cities and one of them told me that it's like three hundred dollars a year to to obtain the pre foreclosure lists okay. and then, and then the other one told me that they can only do like a name search by phone or or a case number search by phone okay what and, county uh 
county. I'm uh, county county. It was in uh, when it was in Allentown, NPA. Allentown County. No, not the county. The city is, is Allentown. I forgot the, the county. The city of Allentown doesn't have pre foreclosures. Oh, really? It's a county. I, well, I, I, I put a shirt on and then get back to me. All right. Okay. Be serious. All right, all right dude. Okay. Like I, I'm here to help you out. You got no shirt. You sit on your bed. Like I, you're not standing up. I don't think you're serious about this, man. Guys, just put a shirt on. Okay. Like we don't want to see that. All right. Like none of y'all Schwarzenegger out here. Okay. You, you ain't got nothing good to look at me neither. I'm putting on a shirt on. Be professional. Okay. Send me like a bed, like you're FaceTiming me. Like, Oh, he's a good what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we trying to get rich or are we trying not to get rich? You don't get rich shirtless on your bed crying about it. Come on. Jeez Louise. Sebastian, you got a shirt on? I do. I go. do. How you doing, man? <laughs> You're standing up. All right. What's up, man? How can I help you out? <laughs> hey, man. Uh, all right. I appreciate uh, you taking the time again. Um, so I've got a follow-up from last time. I was able to uh, find those utility liens for... Uh, some of the water shutoffs in the counties around here. So that was super helpful. Um, while looking at that, I came across a bunch of HOAs liens. And so I kind of asked this in the Facebook group. Um, and a lot of people responded like, yeah, that they would be worth going after. Would, you know, do you guys agree with that? Are they worth, you know? It depends on the property value. So the pro if the value of the property is like over half a million, probably not. Okay. Uh, what's your market again? Uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah. So in Kansas City... I mean, in Kansas City, if your property is worth more than honestly 240, probably don't want to be going after that deal. So okay. if it's below 240 with an HOA, HOA lien, yes. HOAs are a lot more proactive than governments. So okay. I, I'd go after them all day, but they got to be a certain price point. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Are no, you pulling this on like prop stream or something? Uh, no. So those were, these are like straight from the, the okay. county clerk recorders. Yeah. So honestly, as long as the property's not like super luxury, I think you should be fine, man. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, and then, so another question. So your dad mentioned in the video that came out, I think today, maybe yesterday, like uh, that he only has like five KPIs that he likes to track. So oh, yeah. we ended up uh, actually just getting uh, like batch dialer and batch leads. So just started cold calling. With, well, I've been cold calling with Google Voice, but um, now with batch dialer and it's like a huge improvement, right? What... KPIs should I be tracking? You're like, you know, what are those most critical ones that would be the most beneficial to, to keep so an eye on? A, so we, we only really care about five, but we will track all of them just to track them, right? Because sure. some of them do matter, right? So right. for in the five, contact rate's not even there, but I still like to look at it because I'm a nerd uh, with my numbers. Yeah. But honestly, it's all about how many, with, with cold calling, like you can look at all the fancy ones, but how much money did I spend? How many leads did I produce? Actually, scratch that. We care about how much money marketing money we put and how much leads we, we got. That's okay. uh, sorry, how much assignment fees we put in and how much money we spent. That's the only KPIs that really matter between you okay. and me, right? The, the, duh, right? Yeah. But it tells you how much money we spent, how many calls we made, how many leads were produced, how many contracts are written, and how many deals sold. Yeah. That's pretty much it. We'll put appointments in there if we, if we do it in person, but like that's pretty solid. I have a dialer. I want to know calls I made, time called, and then our contact rate, and then how many leads got put into the CRM, which are basically yeses uh, to that right. point. Okay. Uh, I mean, those are basically four. I mean, it's all about how many leads you put in the CRM. And when somebody says, yes, I want to sell my property, then they're putting the CRM. That right. was it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of one of the, kind of a continuation on that. So since we are pulling a lot of the, the free government lists, like uh, those... A uh, code violations has has a big volume, but pre foreclosures, probates, um, the water shutoffs uh, don't have like a huge volume. Do I need to supplement that with pulling li lists on batch leads, or just like do some driving for dollars on the weekends? Driving for dollars would be a better one to supplement. Like, of course, I'd love to use use batch more, prop shoot more, but like, right. driving for dollars would be better. And if you already have batch, you should have a free driving for dollars app inside it, yeah. of it. Exactly. Yeah. And that, so it should be good. Man. Yeah. We'll probably take advantage of that. All right. Oh, and yeah, then definitely too. Uh, two more questions. So um, I had a question about evictions last time. So we pulled a bunch of them. We've got like, I don't know, like close to 100 now. 
but what I've noticed is a lot of them are repeated like LLCs that are foreclosing on or not foreclosing, um, evicting a bunch of tenants, you know, at, at a time for those that are owning multiple properties, are they still worth going after or kind of like you guys have said before, if they own more than three or four properties, then you're, you're dealing with like a, a professional landlord, right? When they deal with four, when, when it goes to four, no, I, for we, we do five, but like, I mean, you're, you're nitpicking at this point. I would say four, I, I'd get off of it. Honestly, who wants okay. to deal with four? Yeah. It's a lot. So okay. I, I do five, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. Four like, or five. I, th th that's the difference between one to two properties that are like 4,000 probably. Sorry. So I may, maybe I'm misunderstanding. Uh, like, do you mean like if they own more than four or five properties, then don't do it? Yeah. Don't do it if they own more okay. than four or five. Okay, cool. Because yeah, I saw I saw a few that come up multiple times, and then it, it made me question like, is, would it be worth even paying for skip tracing on all those properties? So no, but it'd be an extra dollar or two. I, I don't think it's worth it, but it's not going to hurt. Sure, sure. All right, and then the last question is on the creative finance side. So uh, the, we, my girlfriend and I, are, we're partners in this, right? And so we've been lear been learning about wholesaling, and this would be more on the personal side of actually buying a property sub two. Um, we've heard that you should be able to take over, you know, pretty much any type of mortgage. Um, but one that we've, uh, actually spoke to, and this is an on-market property, but like I said, it's for ourselves, um, is actually a, it's on market property. It's a couple going through a divorce, but they got it on a VA loan. Would we still be able to sub to on that VA loan and like well, still allow off, them? Sub two is a trademark marketing term. It's not a legal definition of anything. So when you okay. talk to a lawyer and anyone in a real estate like professional, man, don't don't say that. That's a okay. marketing term. You have to say subject to. That's what oh. lawyers talk about. That's how legal professionals do it. I, I don't do marketing terms. It's okay. trademarked yeah. also. So I, no offense to the owner of that trademark, but oh, yeah. I, I don't use trademark terms. Okay. I, I use actual legal terms. So when you talk yeah. about real creative finance, taking over a mortgage subject to, you can't trademark that, right? right. So first and foremost, VA loans are iffy. I personally don't like VA loans for subject twos. I don't think okay. I'm being mad at me and it gets a little weird. Um, I avoid it. I okay. like conventional. I know people that do FHA, VAs all day. I personally don't go after those, but okay. that is from my, the way I view the law and the way lawyers talk to me. Yeah. There's somebody that does it all day and they're fine with it. And that's okay. Right. They have insurance on, they have subject to insurance, right? Yeah. I personally don't like going after those. I don't want to be a, buzzkill to you but yeah I, I would probably stay away from it from okay. my legal understanding um it gets very iffy if you're taking advantage of the government over their loans because they're giving advantages to veterans but right. you're calling me because you probably know that yeah I, we were there's one thing screwing over a bank for money but then there's the federal government and uh one put, can put you in a jail and one can't so right. that's the way i look at things it's yeah, risk and reward yeah because we we had yeah, what what really put us on the fence was like the fact that um, we weren't sure if they'd still be able to like buy a property. Um, yeah, if we did, if we did, you know, take over his mortgage. Oh no, they would, could buy a property. Yes. Like, would he still be able to to, to like create another VA loan yes, for that you property? Yeah, PITI that they're getting paid uh, okay. to the underwriter. Yes, definitely. That's so, not the problem. So okay, so as far as then showing that payment of the PITI. You know, I was thinking we'd probably use a servicing company. Could we still show that even on like the first month, like, or even you know during the, you know, during the title closing, or, or when we're talking to the, you know, their you know, loan? As far as, well, I guess, would would you need a track record already of multiple months, or can you do it like, you know, from the get go? Um, as long as you have an agreement signed, you should be able to have that. So are they looking to put a property on a contract like right now? Uh, it's been on market for 45 days and it seems like it's been on and off the market for since the end of last year. And like I said, they're going through a divorce. So it seems like they're, you know, dude, if this is a divorce, you're going to pay both parties. Well, uh, so, well, Sebastian, yeah. has there been a divorce decree already? I'm so, uh, I'm not sure. So basically, I don't know exactly in Missouri, the perfect definition of it. So don't quote me as a lawyer, but sure. mostly when you get divorces or decree, that basically says 
half the house goes to Sheila, half the house goes to Tom mm -hmm. or half the proceeds go to Sheila. And then Tom gets half the proceeds or Tom can keep the property. Okay. Sometimes the divorce decree says they both have to sell the property and they just split the proceeds. Depends okay. what the divorce agreement says. There's people mediating. There's a lot going on, man. And yeah. I don't want you to do a full subject too. And then they both agree that they just want to sell it for cash. Then you're screwed. Right. Right. So a divorce man, I would say no to this because a subject two only works when the seller is on board. And when you have two sellers that hate each other, it ain't good, man. Yes. And they're, probably and two months down the line or two years down the line when uh, Sheila gets a new boyfriend and they want to buy a house together and you know, uh, the new boyfriend's a hotshot realtor and says, mm -hmm. you know what? This Sebastian guy's screwing you. He has the house and you have the debt. Hey, Missouri bank, call the loan due. Because yeah. Sheila's new boyfriend's a hotshot paralegal. Too risky, man. Hate to tell Sounds you. good. Yeah. All right. I mean, no, that's that's definitely good to know. So okay. everyone's well, a lawyer, everyone's a realtor, everyone's an expert. There's too much risk on this. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. I appreciate it. Sounds good. All right. Thanks for the hey, info again. See how the divorce goes and how it works. Some sometimes the divorce is very am amicable, but uh yeah. <laughs> it's a toughie, man. I, I sure. personally would say no to this. I would walk away that deal. Uh okay. just because it's a divorce on a credit finance, not my thing. There's people that do it all day. Maybe talk right. to them. I would probably advise against it. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Appreciate it, Sebastian. I appreciate it. Thank up. you, Zach. Have a good one. Of course, man. All right. Yvonne. Hi. Hi, Zach. Hi. Nice talking you? to you again. How are you doing today? Yes. Um, I'm trying to uh, get this wholesaling down pat. All right. So um, I worked this week. I talked to you last Sunday. Yeah. And um, I'm using text as my method with the virtual assistant. And we went after the pre foreclosures. And then after we ran out of those, because it wasn't that many in between the two counties that I'm working, then I went after um, high liens. So liens over $9,000 and with a tax lien. And so we had enough to do a thousand, um, roughly about a thousand um, texts. And I got a, a bunch of uh, responses that were stop. I got some that said yes, that they were interested. The message says that we're in your area purchasing properties cash. And if you're interested, reply back yes. And if you're not interested and want to opt out, the, then to say stop. Um, so, but out of those, I, I, I wasn't able to get anyone that was interested, not even in, um, going on the, that, the retail side. Um, and so I'm not sure, I think it might be my list. I am going to try the Fizbo's tomorrow. That's over a hundred. I put that in the chat, um, for the two counties that I'm working just to try and get a, a, a different feel. But it's frustrating because I've been doing this now for eight months and haven't gotten one deal. Um, I've gotten two for the other side for um, sellers that wanted to sell their property more than what wholesale would provide. Um, so it's just a little bit frustrating. I'm using PropStream to pull this, batch leads to, um, to skip trace, and then... Um, I'm also doing driving for dollars. I've done reverse driving for dollars and then put all of those um, houses on a list that we've also uh, sent um, text to. And um, I now I'm, I'm going to start using uh, was phone burner this week and to start and I'm going to do it myself. Um to uh, dial two hours a, a day, and that hopefully should be close to about 150. Um, they're saying that I should be able to dial in, in a day just to try and get a lead because I've invested a lot of money and I, I have two businesses that I'm not properly staffed. So my time is very, I don't have a whole bunch of time to do this, but I want to be able to, to close one of my businesses 
And um, I really want to be able to do well in wholesaling. So I'm not really sure where the breakdown is happening. Um, is it that I'm not pulling the right list? Am I not driving for dollars in, in the right area? Um, the, the response that I got when I did the reverse driving for dollars was it was a lot of renters. So they would call back and they would say, this was in Harper Woods and East Point. And so they would say, you know, I just rent. This is, you know. And so then I would skip trace the addresses and then I would try and uh, find the person. And sometimes when I would talk to a landlord, the tiers that you gave, mom and pop to buy one or two houses, those are the better ones. The savvy uh, LLCs is out here with 100 or 200 properties. They want the properties so dirt cheap. Um, and they're not looking to sell, then they want top dollar. So I, I just don't know. This week, I'm going to do uh, the Fizzbos tomorrow, um, but I'm not sure what if I'm pulling the, the correct list. Or maybe maybe I might need to go to Toledo, uh, which is only 45 minutes away from Detroit, um, to um, to wholesale. I just, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of at my wit's end, but I'm not giving up. Well, Ivani, I, I got to look at your full marketing right now. So let's kind of talk about texting. How many okay. texts have you sent out the past week? Um, I'm texting off of um, my voiceover IP phone system. It allows me to, um, to send 10 texts separately at one time. So we're able to do 200 in a day. Okay. And that's in, in about uh, three hours. Okay. So 200 days, not terrible. Uh, I mean, it could be better, but okay. So you did what? How many texts? 1,400? No, it was about, it was a little under 1,000 last week. Okay. And did you get any replies at all? Yes. I got some more stops um, than a whole bunch that didn't reply. So then we took those out and those are the ones that I'm going to call on my new system, that phone burner. Um, and then the people that did say yes, when they said yes, and then I would give them a call back or to have conversations with them, they were really unrealistic in regards to the price. And with me being a licensed realtor, that's usually when I'll just go in ahead and try and list their property set up a listing appointment after I talked to them a little bit more, but they, they were a little just um, unrealistic in that area. Cause I looked up the properties. And so I think some people they'll just say, you know, yeah, for 500,000, you can purchase my property. And then I'll come back with the, you know, after I look the property up, the property is only worth like 275, Yeah, you know? And, and so, but I, I didn't get any bites this past week. But the but the bites and I understand being that I have a sales background, it's a numbers game. But I'm losing, <laughs> so I don't know. Well, let's, what, let's keep what talking here. So, 1,400 texts, you can get a deal from that. It's not really unrealistic. So, okay, whatever. What list was that? That was uh, pulling prop stream. That was the pre foreclosures. That was the liens for nine thousand um, dollars and lower. And then I just put tax liens i didn't put a dollar amount to that though so that was okay. a prop stream okay and do you know what your delivery rate was as far as what hit yeah no it won't it won't show that i here's the problem ivani if i can't get that data i don't know if you had a 20 percent delivery rate and that's why it's sucked You're right okay so yeah. do you know how many let's use this you know how many replies you got Mm. No, the reason why I'm asking is funny. I can't make yeah. a decision unless they have the data, right? Okay. And so I got to decide: Hey, is texting the problem? Like, because you have a, uh, you know, an assembly line, and there's a problem. There's a bottleneck. Like, what, what's right. what's the issue, right? Why is this? Why is this pie tastes like terrible, right? Is it too much salt? Right. No sugar, right? The, the the pie looks terrible. What? There's usually one thing that goes wrong, right? Maybe too much flour, not enough flour, right? Right. Let's. Get back to me how many replies you got. Call whatever service you're using and see what your delivery rate is. And we got to see what's up with that. That might be the issue. 
Um, yeah. That's my guess. But let, let's kind of look and see how, do you know how many, uh, you know, come back to me and give me the data. I, I need to know the data before I can make a decision. Okay. Yeah. It's a, um, it's a voiceover IP. I was shocked that they even had texting. <laughs> that's free. It's just, I could text for free. Maybe there's a that. reason why it's free. Exactly. Well, it's, it's good that you can do at least 10 and it's all separate. Um, but no, it doesn't have the data. And some of these other services out here is just too expensive for me right now. You can always use Google Voice. It's free. For text? Mm hmm Oh, I didn't know that. Tell me how many replies you got and get back to me. Okay. Um, are you in public third plus? Yes. Uh, why don't you hop on? Why don't you just DM me all the data okay. and I can reply back probably tomorrow morning. Okay. All right. You're in Flip with the Plus. You can do the uh, Zooms and everything. Um, and let me help you out this week. All right. Okay. All righty. I won't forget you, Yvonne. I promise. Okay. <laughs> okay. The only Yvonne in Flip with the Plus. So, uh, I mean, that I know of. So, you'll be fine. All right. Give me the okay. data. Do you know how to DM me in there? No. Okay. So, when you log in, there should be a Flip with the Plus community tab. On the top right hand corner, there's a speech bubble. Okay. Go to that. Also, uh, there's a getting started guide that'll show you how to do the whole thing in there when you log in, all right? Okay, sounds like When you log in, top right-hand corner, getting started guide. Read that, and it'll show you what to do, all right? Okay. Literally Thank an app you. on your phone. Thank you and so hop much. hop on Thursday if that doesn't work, and I'll walk you through again, all right? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, Bonnie. Have a okay. good one. You too. Guys, it's all about the data. I, you can't make decisions unless you actually get the data. So that's why data is so important. I don't know what's the problem in our business there. Uh, maybe it's the texting. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's skip tracing. Maybe the list. I, I got to figure it out. Uh, but yeah, she'll be in Flipdirk Plus. She's going to DM me. Um, I'll message her personally. We'll hop on the Zooms. We'll help her out with it. So uh, if you want to do that, Flipdirk Plus. Uh, if not, you go to frillson.com, learn how to wholesale for free. Uh, and that's it, guys. I want to see you guys on Tuesday. I'm going to start dialing and uh, doing deals. Can't wait to see you guys. And uh, appreciate it. This is Zach and signing out. And I'll see you soon.